When you actually go back into the history of the police, which is very fascinating, I would ask anybody watching this to actually do the history of the police of any nation, because it comes from exactly the same principle. There is no, no none of it will ever change. You can go to at least 53 countries in the world, or legally defined areas in the world, and you will find that the police were created for exactly the same reason. The two reasons they were created was, one, to, to protect the aristocracy from us, to protect their goods, their lifestyle, their possessions from us. The second reason was to create state control of street life because they knew through keeping crime alive, there was a lot of money to be made there. A lot of money. Through keeping crime alive? Absolutely. That's their job, to keep crime alive. Not to solve crime, to keep it alive. What they did is they, they structured what's called a pri private political army. And they called them the, the police. Now, the funny thing is they were created by policy and they are ruled by policy and they don't do anything outside of the parameters of policy. And if you take the word police and say it differently, it actually says policy. <laughs> so it's there in your face. And it's always been there. The writing's always been on the wall. It's just whether you, you choose to, to read it or not. Um... When you look at the structure of the police, you, 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 you see uh, command structure hierarchy exactly the same as the army, which has been infiltrated by the Ministry of Funny Handshakes. Um, most of chief superintendents, chief constables, all that really should be called chief Freemason, because 90% of them, if not 100% of them, are free, part of the Freemason fraternity, which is uh, um, that element of it is a papable army. So they're actually doing the work, you know, they're, they're, they're under papal orders, if you like. Street life needed, needed to be um, contained and controlled because they wanted to maintain that they were going to earn a great deal of money out of crime. Back in sort of 1740s, there was a man called Charles Hitchens who was a, um, this was before any police actually existed. He was what they call a thief taker. Now, the thief takers were quite interesting because the thief takers would go and reclaim stolen property and sell it back to the people it had been stolen from. Charles Hitchens ran a gang of thieves, according to history, ran a gang of thieves who would go and pickpocket and rob people, bring it back to Charles Hitchens, then Charles Hitchens would find out from the descriptions and obviously insignia on whatever they'd stolen, who it belonged to, and go and sell it back to who it had been stolen from. So it was a very lucrative business. Now, he married a, um, um, a lady, and she had come into some money. She actually come in, she sold, her, her dad left her a house, they sold the house, and he got um, over £700 at that time, which is a lot of, lot of money, which at that time would have been backed by gold. So it would have been worth quite a lot of money. So anyway, he decided he was going to buy himself a position. And he bought himself the position of High Sheriff of the City of London. There was two of them. He bought this position. He didn't, wasn't elected. He wasn't given it. He bought his position. He then made did exactly the same, but just run bigger gangs. But using the smoke screen of being the High Sheriff of the City of London. He was then caught doing it. It was actually, um, I'm sure a man was called Jonathan Wilde. That seems to ring a bell. But he basically was his partner in crime. They'd done the dirty on each other, and one grasped up the other one, and Charles Hishing was suspended on full pay. They investigated him, couldn't find any uh, validation to any of the investigations and he was reinstated to carry on doing exactly what he was doing. So this man was earning a very profitable living out of the state control of street life, i.e. the thief takers. And that's carried on. Yeah, that's how it carried on. So in the end, funny enough, he was arrested for sodomy and was tried for homosexuality and um, convicted. If the government could throw a switch tomorrow that would stop all crime and criminal activities, would they throw it? No. They make too much money from it. Because 
90% of the crime or 99% of the crime they perceive that is crime is actually called victimless crime. There is no victims. And crime can only exist if there is a victim. If there is someone who harm, injury or loss was caused to. If you go for a speed camera, who have you injured? Who's, who's had some form of loss? Where's the damage? There is nothing. So it's a victimless crime. If you park in the wrong place and receive a parking ticket, where's the crime? The crime does pay if you're the government. Absolutely. And that's exactly, crime does pay. There's a little saying that's going about at the moment, actually, that's very, very fascinating. And they're saying, please don't grow cannabis because the police hate competition. Now, no one really gets that, but when you discover that the police and the courts have something called a bribery manager, you start to realise what really is going on.